All right, everybody, we're going to go ahead and get started here. I'm excited to chat and share with you some really cool stuff that's going on. If you guys are not familiar, one of the probably the most amazing trends that's going on is the ability to create some stunning, what I call self-branded images. And what I, I'm going to show you what I mean by that. But what I mean is the ability to now train a model with your images so that when you need an image for a social media post, for a marketing piece, for anything whatsoever, that you can actually generate that with AI and have it look like you. So let me give you an example of where you might use this. So if you're not familiar, when you create social media posts, one of the best ways to get engagement is to post a selfie style image, something of yourself, something that looks like a photo of you or somebody that maybe took or whatever that's gonna stop the scroll. That tends to work better than, for example, my favorite type of image is these cartoon styles. They work, but if you're doing it on your local personal page, this is great. So here was one I just paint, pasted on my personal page, a tip about how to get better response from prompts, and I posted a picture of me, except that's not me. That's an AI-generated picture of me. Pretty darn good one, but it's an AI-generated image of me. And today what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk you through how you can do that. You don't need to hire an expensive photo photographer for a photo shoot. You don't need to go down in this case over to either Lake Michigan or the Gulf, depending on where that might be in, in that picture. You can simply do this in AI, and I'm going to walk you through how to do that. So first thing we need to do is we need to head over to blackforestlabs.ai because we're going to use a brand new AI image tool called Flux, F-L-U-X. And there's a number of different models that are available. Flux is actually designed to be downloaded and ran on your local computer. But if you're like me and you've got an older laptop or whatever and you don't want to do that, you can also access it online through some different services. And they've got three different or four different services here that you can use. I'm going to show you how to use the one through F-A-L. It's this third icon over the purple and, and white icon. And when you click on that, it's going to simply bring you over to FAL here. Let me uh, open this here in a new image so we can take a look at it. Uh, don't worry about how confusing this looks. It's okay. Um, we're going to walk you through how easy it is to use. So we just took a look, at, for example, let me pull this one back up. There we go. I ran this prompt inside of Flux. You could run it in mid-journey and things like that as well, but Flux does just an amazing job. This time it wasn't about me, though. This, I just ran it. So a photorealistic scene of a 45-year-old man with a long white beard. I'm not 45, but I find it gets ages wrong. Uh, walking along the Gulf Coast Beach, USA, wearing shorts and a monochromatic high end shirt, barefoot, soft golden hour lighting, casting long shadows, wave crashing nearby. Pretty good photo. I mean, that looks fairly photorealistic, maybe a little dark in the face, but not bad. So Flux, super good. But even better, when you train it with selfies and stuff like that, now you can get images, exact same prompt. But in this case, I'm just saying Jonathan Mast. I trained it. And I'm going to show you how to do that in just a minute. And now I'm getting images that reflect my face and style. There you go. They even got my pudginess and my big fat legs and everything else going on there. And that looks a lot like me. Is it perfect? No, but it's really close. And it certainly works for marketing and things like that. And what's exciting about it is there's all kinds of different ways you can do this. I'll go back into my requests here for a minute. I played around with this quite a bit. Let's go ahead and see. You can see I've got 23 pages, so hundreds and hundreds of images in here. Let's grab one here at random and see how it does. So here's one that I created. Uh, not one of my favorite ones, but not terrible. So we can just take a look of me in a navy blazer. And again, that's probably not my favorite. It did some that were quite a bit better than that. Let's see if I can find one real quick. But the neat thing about this is I can start prompting for most anything that I want and have it go ahead and put information in. Here's one that I did like a lot. So I did a wide shot at this point of me and I love dirt bikes. So it's a little dark, but I can lighten it up. You can see a dirt bike in the background, me standing there. Even look at my funky hair. I mean, this is me. I've got the major receding hairline. I've got wispy hair at the top. My beard, you can see it's even caught. And again, this is a little bit dark, but it's caught the darkness of my mustache, the waviness of my beard. That's not me, guys. That's AI. And it's really just quite incredible what we can get up with. I'll find one more here. Let me go back a couple pages and see if we can find a better example. We're going to just pick randomly and hope I get a decent one. This one's not too bad. So let's take a look. 
so again, me in a Navy blazer standing in a warehouse, um, that looks a lot like me. And perfect, no, but really close, certainly good enough for, for anything that I need to use it for, uh, and easy prompts. So you may be asking, how do we do this? Well, let me show you. What we're gonna do here is we're gonna go into Flux and we're gonna get started. We're actually gonna go to the Explore tab here a minute. And when you go here, you're going to see, and this is, by the way, what opens up when you click on that link over here in Black Forest Labs. When you click on here, you're going to say Train a Flux LoRa, or L-O-R-A, and that's a type of model. And what we're going to do here is we're literally going to go out and we're going to prepare for ourselves probably 15 to 20 images. You can These can be selfie images. These can be photos that you took with somebody else. Uh, preferably, it's just you, though. Different shirts, different angles, full body, headshots, you name it. I even grabbed some from a recent photo shoot I was in. I grabbed some photos that were taken of me when I was speaking, and I uploaded about 30 images. I did that in a zip file to make life easy, and here's one of the important considerations. When you put those files in, you want to make sure that they all have a particular name. And so what I did is when I uploaded them, all of them started with photo underscore of Jonathan J. Mass, just like that. And then a number, 0001. So every one I did. So that was photo one. And photo two, I'll give you an example. We'll, we'll keep going here. So photo two was like that. Photo three was like this. And you can see I just put those file names and I had it automatically number. By the way, you can rename them easily. If you're on a Mac or PC, it's super easy to do. Get those images you want, put them in a folder, rename those images so that it follows this naming convention. And then when you go to train your LoRa model, go back out to that so I can show it to you. When you go to train your LoRa model, not only are you going to add your zip file, but you're going to pick a trigger word. And that trigger word is going to be the exact same name that you had in the file name. Obviously, you're not going to use my name. You're going to use yours. But you're going to use the exact same name that you had there. And that's going to be your trigger word. That means that later, after it runs, you're going to go ahead and when you run this, as long as I put this, Jonathan J. Mast, at the beginning, I'm going to tr get an image that reflects my style that looks like me. And I'm going to show you, we'll run a couple more examples here just to show you how that works. Now, these do cost money. You're going to have to go ahead and do that. When I signed up, uh, I put in $20. I ran through that pretty quickly. And so I added another. So I've ran through just over $22 at this point in time, but I've created hundreds of images for $22. So average cost per image is, is literally in the under a nickel range. So not bad whatsoever. Uh, and lots of options that you have. The other thing that I like about this is when I go to run the photos, I've got a lot of different options. So I've got square, I can do square high, high definition, two different portraits, landscape custom. By the way, if you do HD, it is gonna cost a little bit more because it charges you per megapixel here. You can see it charges you three and a half cents per megapixel. So the larger image you have, the more megapixels it's going to take. At a 768 by 1024, it's not a very, very high res photo, but it works perfectly fine by the time you download it. It, it really does work well. Then you're going to have uh, Seed, which we don't use here, but you could if you had another image you were going to upload to work it off of. You can define the scale of it if you want, so you can make it bigger if you want to. Generally, I don't find that's needed unless you're really going to be using it for something major. Um, but again, for all my social media, I use it for lots of other things. The one scale has been just fine. And then you've got your guidance scale. And I, I made a post I'll share with you guys later on Facebook. I went through and ran the same prompt on literally all the different guidance scales from zero all the way to 20. I find that somewhere in the middle works best. I'm generally running between about 10 and 12, sometimes 13. I find that the higher you get, the more plasticky your skin starts looking, and the lower you get, the less it looks like you. Um, still does, but gets a little bit more creative. So basically, the lower the number, the more creative it is. The higher the number, the more it's like you. But it does tend to make your skin look a bit, as I said, plasticky. Uh, for lack of a better one. And then you can pick number of images. So I'm going to pick four just because it's easy for us to go ahead and do that. And then you can even select out format. I generally like the PNG. And then what we're going to do is we need to create a prompt. 
So I'm going to share this with you guys as well. I'll put this in the notes. So I've created a custom uh, avatar here. And this is a custom GPT, and I happen to really like the style of Peter McKinnon, so that's what I use. But you can type in any scene in here, and it will create five image prompts that you can use. So um, let's just say, for example, I'm looking outside right now. It's a nice autumn day. Uh, so let's just say man taking a walk through the woods in autumn. Sun light on trees exposing brilliant fall colors so that's good enough we'll just do that now you as we watch this and again i will share this in the notes with you guys i'll have free access to this it's going to go ahead and create five prompts for me now i have written this to work for mid journey so you're going to have to make one small change when you use this and that you're not going to copy the imagine prompt because that's part of a mid journey and you're not going to include these last little dash dash commands which are mid journey so we're going to literally grab this middle part right here super easy just highlight that copy paste Go back over into Flux, and once you've trained your model, I literally am just going to paste that in. And let's go ahead and run, and we're going to get four images, and we'll see what happens. It does take maybe 15, 20 seconds to generate images, depending on how busy the server is. If you need to wait, it won't say generating image. It'll actually say waiting in queue, and then you'll know it starts generating your image for you. And again, generally I'm finding 15 to 20 seconds, and here we go. So I've created four images for me. Now in this case, these are a little bit zoomed out, so that's probably not what I want. No big deal. So let's go ahead and grab this next one. And that's why we have it give us five prompts so we can try different things out and see what we like. Go ahead and paste that in. Wait another couple seconds here, and we'll see what generates. And one of the reasons we have it generate five prompts is that sometimes the AI infers different things. But as you're seeing this, it gives some really cool descriptions that I would have never come up with on my own. So these are definitely still further out than I want. Let's go take a look and see if we've got one close-up. There we go. Let's try a close-up one. We'll try this one. Hopefully this will get us something we like a little bit better. There's always some trial and error, but again, at three and a half cents, it's not going to bankrupt us anytime quickly, so that's good. And then we can go ahead and see what comes up here. These images are, by the way, licensed for you for commercial use. You can see that right up here uh, so that you're in good shape. You can use it for whatever you want. It still didn't do exactly what I was hoping for. So it's definitely uh, kind of stuck on a model there that it did. Uh, let's see. That's all silhouette. Let's say, let's try this again. New image prompt with close up of man standing in autumn woods try that real quick all right and if this doesn't work again you guys i think are getting the point i won't bore you to death but we'll try one more here a minute and let's see what happens by the way, anytime I want to see the past ones I've done, I can simply click on requests and it will bring me back to all my past images. You can see we've ran a number of options here. We haven't even spent 30 cents. So uh, again, creating images here is not an expensive procedure. There we go. Now I've got things that resemble me again and we can take a look at. A little bit too short on the beard, a little bit too much hair on top, but again, possibly passable. Uh, this one looks a little better right here. Let's try this one. That's definitely a little bit better. And again, if I want to use that now, I can download it. I can bring it into other applications. I can do whatever I want. Simply click the download button and I've got it. Super easy, super effective. And you can see if I run it again, it's going to create slightly different images each time you run it. So if you find a prompt that's creating stuff you like, just rerun it again and you'll get additional images that will give you Again, other perspectives. It'll be similar. It's going to have some consistencies, but it's not going to be identical. Just like the four images weren't identical, these are not going to be identical either. All right, so this will be our last image generation. Let's see what comes up here, and then I'll walk you through just a couple more things. All right, so we got some more close-ups. Again, fairly similar. You can see a little bit of different stuff. I kind of like that one. You don't have to run four. That's what I chose to do, but it gives you that. 
one of the things I want to point out here that's kind of neat, my wife loves to point out, is the fact that it even gets my funky eyebrows. So I've got really funky eyebrows. Uh, they look just like that. But it's picked that up. And, you know, it's an example of how good a job this really does as you're creating images. You can put yourself in different scenarios. You can have fun with it. You know, anything that you want. And you don't have to do the long prompt. You could simply go in here and say, standing on top of a farm silo in Nebraska, let's say Iowa, surrounded by cornfields. So you don't have to necessarily go and again use the prompt. You can get pretty specific or pretty general, and you're still going to do it. If you saw there at the top, it was telling me what position I was in. I was waiting in the queue for just a second as it generates these. The key here is make sure that you're putting your name. That trigger word that you uploaded has got to be there at the beginning because that's going to make all the difference. And we got me way away in a couple of them. It looks like this one's probably the closest. Doesn't look perfect, but not bad. And again, I'm standing on a silo in the cornfields of Iowa. And even the dimensions are about right, because that corn's probably going to be about my height. And it looks like I'm about there. The silo may be off a little bit, but that's all right. So anyway, I hope that gives you uh, some ideas and things you can do. Again, then you can bring those in and use those in different areas. If you want to go back to what you've done before, you click on requests. So you can click back through and see anything you've done. See, I've generated 465 images so far. We'll click back in, show you some of those that are even a little bit funkier as I go back further. You can get super creative with these if you want to. So I was having some fun for a while. Uh, one of my uh, clients calls me the AI wizard. I don't know that that's accurate, but I thought, you know, let's go ahead and make me a wizard. And there we go. Took my face, made my beard just a little bit longer, made me look like a wizard. But notice one of the things that AI always gets wrong is the fingers, and even the fingers look good in this one. So just a good example of the type of things that you can do. You can have lots of fun with these and play around. So I hope that's helpful. Again, just as a quick recap, you want to go to Black Forest Labs. You want to go ahead and click on the third icon over for FAL.AI. Once you come in there, you can create any image you want. You don't have to make it an image about yourself. You can create anything here you want. Or if you go in and train that LoRa model, then you can go ahead and generate images that reflect you. And just as a quick recap, to train that LoRa model, we're going to go click on Explore and Train a LoRa Model. We're going to upload a zip file. We're going to name all those files with the exact same trigger word and then make sure that trigger word's in here. That's super important to make sure that it knows what's going on and how things are working. Once you're in here, there's other things you can do if you want. There's other image models and all that that are done by FAL as well. Uh, you can play around with these if you want to. Certainly not a requirement, but it gives you an opportunity. You can see lots of different flux models, stable diffusion models, uh, aura models. Let's see, we've got uh, runway models, if you've ever heard of that. This is how we can actually do image to video. So imagine uploading an image here and turning it into a video or just typing here. We could literally type anything we want and we can create video from that as well. Um, we could go ahead and upload one of the images. Let's try this here with one of mine. So, and let's see what happens. Run. Hopefully it'll use my picture. I've not tried this, guys, admittedly, so we're going to hope it's going to use that and not the bunny photo. Let's find out real quick. But if not, it will generate this video for us. And it's going to cost about 25 cents for a five-second uh, clip. So, again, cost-wise, super, super affordable. Uh, even if you play around with that, if you imagine trying to do that, it would be very, very difficult to do uh, and very expensive to get a custom shoot. Let's see what it does. So there we did. So this is pretty cool, guys. Literally just an image that I uploaded. You can see it. And it created a five-second clip that I could now use and, and download. And, again, that's close enough to me that I would be comfortable using that. And, hang on, I'm going to go ahead and download that because that's pretty cool. So, again, uh, AI imagery, AI to video, uh, super, super effective, and hopefully something that makes tremendous amount of sense.